If you'd all please come to order. I don't know. Find a seat. Okay, well, I'm going to call you Elton. The entire meeting, I'm going to call you Elton. Lena, I'm going to call you Elton the entire meeting. Elton. Okay. Okay, and I'll make Mark short this last. I've always wanted to do that. The last, no, no, the, the person who normally is the last one in this event is Elton. Oh, I have Elton Hopper. Now you, you always get a pass. Okay. Thank you, Elf. Okay. Good morning. Good morning. Oh, yeah, this is good enough. <laughs> Welcome to meeting number 270 of TMG the Mac Group. If you want to, if you brought a laptop or uh, any sort of wireless device and you want to be connected to the internet, that's the um, SSID, or as I call it, the name of the radio station you would connect to, and that's the, uh, the password, Apple Access. That's it, I'll close that off. Close that. Hold up, Bill. Yep. <laughs> what am I? Look over here. Look over there. Oh. <laughs> I relinquish. You relinquish. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't matter. Okay. Okay. We're going to go here. So let's fire up our agenda. Being, being over 65 and sometimes, you know, things just don't click. That's why I have this up here. The agenda. So as I roll through the items, if I skip one by mistake, Everybody knows the drill. You say, hey, wait a minute, Bill, you forgot. Okay. So anyway, meeting number 270. And the first thing I do is I put up the agenda. The main presentation I will be presenting once again. It's going to be on the topic of cord cutting, or no longer using a cable company for your entertainment access. <laughs> and I've brought two different types of what are called set-top boxes with. One of them is an Apple TV, and the other one is a Roku, R-O-K-U. All right. And there'll be more about that in the presentation. OK, so first thing we do is news. Does anybody have any news items they want to share with the group? Things going on locally, prices, you know, deals that you spotted? Going once, going twice. Oh, you people are disappointed this week. Yeah. Well, how about the question of, of this uh, malware that's sort of well worldwide? Um, oh, the so ransomware guess, or yes, SNP? Yes, yes. Ransomware. Okay, what's the question? Well, supposedly it doesn't affect Max. If you were running an older version, of Java and an older version of the Mac operating system. So, for example, if you were running Lion, which was Mac OS, no, excuse me, Mac OS 7, and you didn't update your Java, theoretically, if you clicked all the boxes that would pop up and said, yeah, go ahead, infect my machine, it would do it. And that happens sometimes with people. They, they, you know, you're just so used to clicking in the boxes, it's almost as if we've been trained, you know, like the little duck that, you know, the little duck with the water cup that go up and down, you know, we just automatically get okay. So, the thing I would caution people is, read the dialog boxes. And if you don't understand what it's saying, say no, or say cancel. Um, but it is a very serious problem, not so much for the fact that uh, ransomware is out there. That, how many of you know what ransom? How many of you don't know what I'm talking about? Have no idea what ransomware is. Okay. Ransomware is this really, really nasty thing that some hackers do to computers, where they lock down the computer and they encrypt the hard drive. And they say, if you don't pay me money, 
to this account in the Ukraine or Georgia, you know, someplace in Eastern Europe. I'm not going to unlock your computer. All right, now you may be thinking, well, big deal, I got my iPad, I got my iPhone. What if you're running a hospital? And this is one of the main computers at the hospital. Or in the case of a hospital in the National Health Service in the United Kingdom, where every single computer at the facility got blocked down. Well, you might be willing to pay that. So that's called ransomware. They're holding your computer, the programs, and your data for ransom. Okay. Well, the reason why the ransomware attack that's occurring right now is very, very serious is where did they get the programs and the scripts that do the encryption and the locking down of the computer? Well, there's a very nice institution in uh, Fort Meade, Maryland. It's called the National Security Agency. And by the way, on Savage Road, outside of the facility, there's a really good delicatessen. That's where I used to go for lunch. It's still there. Okay. Um, and they had a series of hacking tools that had been developed with our tax money for use against bad guys. And somehow, some way, they got loose. Okay. And that's why it's a very, very severe concern. Because when the premier <coughs> agency that watches what other people do gets hacked, that says to me that mm, we got problems somewhere that need to be taken care of. Okay, so that's why it's of, of import to me. Of course, the news media is just, you know, that it's, you know, out of there. Okay, yes, Jim. Uh, a corollary to that is a discussion that's going on right now vulnerability of the, uh, of the cloud uh, facilities, including yes. iCloud. Yes. And they're reinforcing the need to have a complex password plus the two-factor certification. Yes. And a lot of people in this room uh, several months ago were questioning, why do I need two-factor certification? That is correct. And one of the other things that is troubling to me is that one of the tools that was also uh, stolen from the NSA is a tool that will let you spoof two-factor authentication. In other words, you can convince any iPhone, Android device that it is some other device so that when the two-factor comes through, it goes to the wrong device. Now, going back to his point, sure. uh, is the iCloud uh, more uh, secure than the Google Cloud or some of the other commercial clouds? Uh, okay. So we're that's, talking that's, 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 the, that's the question okay. he might have wanted to ask. So now we're talking about cloud services. Okay. So that's where we would become vulnerable. Okay. Whenever you hear someone use the word cloud, cloud, okay, what they're really saying is your data is being stored on someone else's computer. Okay, it's like we've gone back 40 years. And we're back to where there's mainframes and we're logging in from our dumb terminals and our data is somewhere on a magnetic tape that's going to be on. Okay. The problem I have with iCloud storage is a very simple one. As a consumer, I do not know where my data is being stored. I don't know if it's being stored in North America is it being stored in Asia? Is it being stored in Europe? Is it being stored in Africa? Where is it, is it, you know, where is it being stored? And they don't tell you. The other thing that's troubling is uh, sometimes it's being stored pieces here and pieces there. So you'll have load leveling between data centers that occur. Um, so I'm not a big fan of iCloud Drive Google Drive, Amazon Drive, help me, what's the one for Microsoft? OneDrive. OneDrive. One. OneDrive. I'm not a big fan of any of those for things that I would be uncomfortable getting out. There would be financials, tax returns, that kind of stuff. Photographs, uh, I'm sort of like, eh, I don't know if I like that idea either. 
So I'm much more a proponent of keep your photos on your local storage device, keep your documents on your local storage device. Okay. Uh, if you want me to rank them in terms of security, Amazon, Google, and Apple, and then Microsoft. Amazon is safer than uh, iCloud. The my is my current understanding with discussions that I've had with folks at Rackspace, Amazon is the most secure at this particular point for Amazon Drive stuff. Okay, Google Drive next, Apple, and then finally the Microsoft. And the only reason I've got Apple at the third tier is that they keep doing dumb stuff with their iCloud services. The VP that's supposed to be in charge of all this, somehow that position still hasn't gotten filled. The person they hired uh, didn't take the job. And so they don't have one person that's focusing their attention like a laser on you know, the iCloud services. So you, you, get, um, you get consumers who get dialogue boxes that they don't understand, because Apple doesn't clearly explain it, uh, do you want to turn on iCloud Drive? And then they wonder what happened to all the documents that were on their desktop and in their documents folder. Well, they've been migrated onto an iCloud Drive. That confuses many people. Yes, Ray? OK, it's already on the cloud. Now, how do you <laughs> reverse it? It depends on the, what cloud service you're on. iCloud. Okay, iCloud, okay, what I do is I double click on the, if I'm on a Mac, you know, so I'm on Mac OS, I go to the iCloud Drive folder, and I double click on that, it's not really a folder here, it's a folder up there, and I manually move the stuff down to a storage device. Okay, then I turn off iCloud Drive, and then it starts to do all sorts of things. I just realized that, yes? Where would you rate Dropbox in with the cloud storage? Uh, Dropbox, a lot of people don't know this, but Dropbox actually stores its stuff on Amazon servers. So it's on an Amazon Drive. I need to back up to the very beginning of the meeting because I forgot to do something. Our dreaded welcome. OK. so. One of the things, and I apologize for doing this out of order, one of the things we always like to do is uh, make our guests feel welcome by saying welcome. So we have a guest today, and it's Derek Chang. Okay, now I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask, we also call this the embarrassment. What I'm going to ask you to do is just stand up for a minute. Tell us what kind of stuff you do with your computers and what kind of stuff you want to learn how to do but you don't know how to do. And if you don't know what to say, then that's okay too. Um, I came here mainly for one reason. That is, I have an optical disk stuck in my iMac. Okay. Super dry. Okay. And I'm trying to find the answer to that. I already did a lot of things. I tried to fix it for yeah. about four weeks, but I haven't done it. Okay. All right. The answer I'm going to give you, you're not going to like. <laughs> okay. Are you? You're located in the area, yeah. in the Dayton area. Okay. This is an iMac, and it's in the inside the iMac. It's not a super drive that plugs into the iMac, no. right? So it's in the iMac. Okay. You either take it to the Apple Store at the Green <laughs> to have them remove it. Okay. Or if you want to go to another Apple authorized dealer, you go down to Cincinnati to Micro Center on Mosteller Road. Yeah, no, so. Or if you don't want to go to an Apple authorized dealer, if you just want somebody to do it for a little bit lower price, down in Austin Landing, there's a place called Experimac. Okay, they do good work. Okay. And there's also a place in Kettering called DNA. And they're near Christopher's Restaurant, so that's uh, Woodman, and Dorothy. Woodman and Dorothy Lane. So there's DNA. Uh, all three of them, all four of them will do it. If, you're, if it's a new Mac and you're still in warranty and you've got Apple Care, take it to the Apple Store because that'll be the lowest cost solution. If it's not got Apple Care, 
it's out of warranty, I would probably go to either MCC, excuse me, Micro Center in Cincinnati or Experiment or DNA. There's yeah. also Gem City Digital in the in the green also. Say again. Gem City Digital. Okay, Gem City Digital. They're in the green. They like Mac. Okay. Where are they in the green? Next to the AT and T store. Okay. Or on that road, right in that same part. Okay. Small business shop. Okay. Well, you got your answer. So now, if you want to leave, you can leave. Or you can stay <laughs> okay. So there's one other thing. I'll leave. At the break, people should come up and say hello to Derek. You know, make them feel welcome. If they want to borrow money, just no. Okay. I do that every month with that. Okay, so Bill, we got the agenda. Bill, 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 Bill one question. There. Yep. What have you tried so far? Oh, okay. Uh, I tried so many things. I, I, I cannot list them, but okay. I did try turning the computer off, and when it restart, you push, you keep holding down. Yeah. The mouse button. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, all you got to do is hold down. I the also mouse did button. the mouse. I also did uh, push it down until uh, until something happens. Then you push the other button, which yeah. says, uh, you know, this this card, this, car, this uh, is it and I also put in another disc into that same disc slot until I see, hear the sound. Yeah. And I'm holding it until I thought it's going to push out something. I put it out, but then it stops. Okay. So I'd say he's done all the stuff he could do. They actually, they have to open up the, the IMAN. Suction cups, you pull up the glass screen, and then you got to move the other, yeah. It's not for regular people to do. Okay. <laughs> it depends on how well the Lumens don't have the, hmm? if it has a drive in it, because the new ones have the glasses glued down. No, this it would be, if it's got an optical yeah, drive, it's, it's not one of the new right. ones. Yeah. Is it mounted on the desktop? That would be my question. Well, if he did a shutdown and a restart, that would take care of that. So, okay, so anyway, don't listen to everybody else. Just, I think you're at the point where you, you need to take it to a, a repair shop for them to take it out. Does okay. this tend to be a mechanical problem or an electronic problem? Um, okay, now I'm channeling all the weird stuff that journalists used to do with CDs and DVDs at the newspaper. Almost always it's a warped disc or it's a loose label. You know, you get a label where it's whacked up yeah. and it won't let it come out all the way and it's like... No, sort of a here. mechanical problem. Yeah. yeah. Stictation. Does that, I'll, I'll say it's stictation. Does that make you <laughs> Bill? Yeah. Just for your thing, I had a friend who had an older Mac and she was afraid she was going to have to buy a new one. I sent her to Experimac and she sent me a chance. They fixed it, they fixed it. Thank you so much. Okay. So I recommend Experimac for whatever that's worth. Well, yeah. Experiment. They're the, they're the new people in town um, and we've had it, their owners, uh, excuse me, not the owner, but the Husband of the owner has visited us, and a bunch of people have used them. And you know, I go by what the, ones the results were. He, he joined last, hmm? last month. He joined last month. So yeah. Okay. Yeah. So anyway, where but, is this experiment? Austin Landing. Austin Landing. Okay. Austin Landing. It's tricky to find. But yeah, I know. Austin Landing. Everything. I called him first to get directions. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, they recreated downtown. <laughs> Environment is like, okay, all the bad parts are done. Okay, so with that said, let me go ahead. Um, we, we went into help desk. Let me just add one little news item. For those of you who were interested when we were talking about VPN services last month, there's a web browser called Opera, it's from Europe. It's got free VPN services built into it. And you can pick which country your VPN portal comes out at. So I've stopped using the Free Canada VPN and the Free UK, uh, UK VPN. And when I want to watch the uh, Canadian broadcasting content or the uh, British broadcasting content, I just fire up Opera, O-P-E-R-A, and in your settings you have to turn on VPN. 
And then what happens is your computer is channeling to that computer and it pops out to the internet from there. Okay, so I'm looking at Jim Bourne. And is that a free app? Much easier setup. Yes. Is that a free app? Yes. What is VPN? Yes. One, yes. one thing Thank with you. use, I, I started We're using it too. Yeah. And something I've noticed is when you go on to a site to buy stuff, yeah. it's hard telling what currency you're going to get because it depends on where the VPN is. Correct. So you have to kind of press around to get dollars. You use VPN services, and it stands for Virtual Private Network. Okay, Virtual Private Network. And I'm going to give you my homespun explanation of what a VPN is. Think of the internet as being a sewer. Okay. And the computers are commodes. You've got these toilets, okay? And you want to send stuff from this house to that house. And you're going to send it through the sewer system. And you're going like, oh, this is not going to be good. So what you do is you take the flexible pipe, you put a cap on it, shove it down, <laughs> goes down the commode, through the sewer, the internet, comes up at the other place, you uncap that end, you uncap this end, okay? Yeah, was so good. They almost put me to work in the kitchen this morning because I showed up early. Uh, uh, and then when you're sending your stuff, yeah, it's going through the internet, but it's going through its own little tube, a virtual private network. So people who have access to the internet don't have access to what's inside that tube, and they can't see what's inside that tube, including your internet service provider. Okay, now, if you're buying stuff, typically you want to make sure that you've got a secure connection and the store that you're buying from knows who you are. So you don't want to be popping up, you know, trying to buy stuff from England if you're here in the U.S. And you don't want to be popping up in, you know, somewhere in the Ukraine or somewhere in Georgia. You want to be popping up from the U.S. So when you're buying stuff, Turn the VPN off. Okay. Yes. Does I'll, the VPN require the person on the other end to have Opera or some VPN? No. What what the folks that make Opera, they're out of uh, Scandinavia. They're really big on personal privacy. Okay. So they have made an arrangement where they pay this other VPN service to do this, just for free if you're using Opera. Okay. Now, I will say this. Do not use Opera VPN for illegal services because if you do, okay, eventually the world governments will get fussing at Opera and then they'll have to retract this, but right now it's a very nice free way to be able to do VPN. Okay. Well, a second follow-up question like the commentators do to the president. Uh, <laughs> the does the other person have to have VPN capability when you're trying to go to him with Opera? No, because what happens is your computer's connecting to that VPN provider. They handle where you pop out. So you're oh. coming out on one of their things. So you're so it's like I fire up my web browser, I turn on VPN, I say, hey, make it so that it looks like I'm in Canada. Now I can watch Canadian television or listen to Canadian that some people have also put uh, other things there, including uh, uh, some RAM. So if, at the break, take a look at the freebie table, see if there's anything that you want, and take it with you. Again, if you have things in your household that you don't need or want anymore that are computer-related, that work, okay, and you don't want them, think about bringing them to a meeting, putting them on the freebie table. So, anybody else have anything that they have for sale? I'm looking at Dan. Anything for sale? <laughs> I brought in a bunch of free 
stickers, Apple stickers, little white Apple stickers on okay. the membership table. Anybody wants it. Okay, so over at the membership table, there's little squares of paper like this, and they've got stickers on them. Okay, decals, whatever you want to call them. They're Apple. And how many iPads did you buy? 150. How many? 150. 150. Okay. For what? For what? A school I volunteer at. Yeah. He's He's on, 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 that's on top of the other 500. <laughs> One of the reasons why I enjoy coming to these and hosting these, these gatherings is the people that come. You know, Mr. George has just got his, his, do they give you a pin or a plaque for a thousand hours of volunteer pin. service? Pin. They give you a pin? That's a free dance. Thousand hours of volunteer services at the uh, Air Force Museum. And that's, we have people there that's got 25,000. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Okay. So, but that's the kind of people that you are. You're volunteers, you help you do stuff, you got grandkids, you know, you run your lives, you don't complain too much. Good people. Okay. Did you buy some new $350 iPads? I'm just curious what those are like in case someone has. They are the same uh, size as the uh, iPad Airs. Uh, they're, they're called 9.7s. I mean, that's what they're calling them. Now, they are a little thicker, but other than that, they're the exact same size. Uh, they have the A9 processor in them, so they're faster, and the minimum is a 32 gig. So okay. the other ones that we have are only 16 gig. Okay. So did you buy them for the school? I wonder if they, I was told they were good for schools. Oh yeah, they are. We buy them in bulk. Mm -hmm. You know, they come in boxes of 10. Now, he didn't write the check. Yeah. Yeah. He just was the procurement <laughs> officer. Uh, I drafted it, but I didn't sign it. <laughs> okay. okay. Thank you. Just I just was curious. I heard, heard about it. Yeah. I just thought I'd mention that. Otherwise, people will come during the break. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'm awesome. Okay. Yeah. All right, uh, let's go ahead and help us. People have problems? Yeah. Yeah. Yes, Jim? Uh, I had to replace uh, my Epson printer, and they sent me a replacement printer. Okay. And uh, when you have a Mac Macintosh, so Epson doesn't uh, complete the, the update of the drivers that's compatible with the Mac systems. Okay. Uh, so if you go, if you have to replace one of the Epson products, you also, after you download the new drivers and things from the Epson website, you have to go to the App Store, and there's a supplemental app that okay. makes your system talk to each other. I, I, could, uh, I could make a copy uh, on the printer mm -hmm. and view it on my computer, but I couldn't send a message to the computer to print a document until I downloaded the Apple supplement. Okay. So this is an additional compliment. You and I have talked about okay, this a couple of years ago. Epson doesn't, Epson yeah. and Apple don't talk together very well. Yeah. Is that a workforce? Epson yes. workforce? Yes. Okay. So that's just an alert that you need to go to the Apple uh, store after you download all the updates from the Epson. It, it, to, to break up old history, way back when, when we were running Macintosh computers with an operating system called Snow Leopard, Microsoft at the same time was, was getting ready to, to uh, put out their new operating system, which I think was Vista. And they had taken so long to do it. They kept telling the printer manufacturers, yeah, Vista's coming, Vista's coming, Vista's coming, that the printer manufacturers basically tuned out any company saying that they had a new operating system coming, because they just assumed that, you know, they'd take forever. Well, Apple brought out Snow Leopard, and there were no drivers for it, because the printer companies didn't believe Steve Jobs when he said, yeah, if we do it every, every 18 to 24 months, we come out with a new operating system. So you had all of these people that had new printers that had their Macintoshes, and there was no way to get these things to work. So Steve Jobs rented a bunch of Winnebago's and he put Apple engineers in the Winnebago's and he sent them to the development sites for Canon, HP, what do you think, uh, Xerox, well, Lexmark, Lexmark, Xerox, Epson, etc., to park in their parking lots and 
to work with their people to develop drivers. And then, from that point on, you would get your printer drivers from Apple instead. In other words, the Apple engineers would always make sure that the printer drivers were ready, and you would download them from the Apple website. So this is sort of a breaking of that previous processor chain with Epson, EPSON printers. Okay. All right, so just sort of make that note. If you buy an Epson, you got extra stuff to it. Okay, anybody else have any problems? Yes. Dan. What you said on that, I've got a, I have an Epson. Okay. And um, one of the things is, it's semi problem. Um, I do a lot uh, scanning of pictures and things mm -hmm. like that. Um, the scanner, where it's asking you to scan, doesn't really show that that is. I mean, I just know that that little box means scan. Okay. If I were to get those Apple, go through Apple and, and get those, yeah, that's that probably going to work better. Bill? Yeah. The font color is white and the box is white. Oh. <laughs> yeah. So you could just barely make it out. Okay. Uh, just change the font color. Yeah. Well, you can't. Okay. <laughs> so you're saying that. But when I get, when I load down Don't both sides, yeah. <laughs> and I do the scan, I can see the document. And then it asked me to say, oh, okay. "Okay, this is this is what you want to make a comment." And all the dialog boxes, you can read the text. Yeah, yeah, so you could read everything, but you got to have both sets of drivers. Okay. So what what I would suggest you do, Dan, is in your spare time. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Lots of in your spare time, go on out to the Epson website, click on the support, and then look for your printer and see what they have for downloads for Macintosh. For the of the there, there isn't one. No, they've. No. What? I've looked and looked and looked, and it's they haven't changed it. Okay. The Epson well, scan. They to go to the Apple web <coughs> to get something. Okay. But so, what you ought to tell them is when they buy a brand new printer, there'll yeah. be a disc in there. Yeah. And everybody will load that disk and think it's up to date. It may not be, because that printer might have sat in a warehouse for six months or something. Well, so always go to the printer's website, or the Apple site, and download okay. software. Now, I don't want to make you feel old, but the, when I bought a printer about two weeks ago, there were no disks in the printer at all. There was a piece of yeah. paper that so said, go to... This site go and and a, and, a, and a very nice explanation of how to connect this to my Windows 10 machine, which was not helpful because I was connecting it to a Linux server. Okay. I'm going to go to George now. This, yeah. I have a somewhat different question. Several of my apps, you know, they, they got a screen on, and they'll have the dark print, you know, the, but there also will be some printing which is sort of like, almost like half tone, or it's, it's, it's very faint. Mm -hmm. Well, I don't know if my computer is changing, or I am changing, or whatever, but I would like to know if there's a way to kind of increase the intensity of the writing on some of these, uh, uh, you know, grayed out kind of thing. Okay. Is there a, Calibration curve or something I can play with. Well, what where I would start is in a different place. Now this is on a computer, not a desktop. Okay, where I would start is let me just get this out of the way. I would go into my system preferences, and then I'd go down to the one that says accessibility. Right. Okay, and in there, I would start doing stuff with the display. So, for example, we can uh, invert the colors. Okay, there are some uh, eye maladies where inverting the colors makes it readable for the person. Or I might, you know, as I already have contrast increased. And so, you know, by uh, increasing contrast, it makes it more visible for me and also more visible on the screen like that. And then you can also do things like really increase the contrast. And the other one that I do, of course, which is increase the cursor size, because I keep losing my cursor. 
<laughs> so anyway, um, but there are ways that you can tweak it, but they're not in the display control pane. They're in the accessibility. Okay. And now, as it says down below, you can change the brightness. Brightness is in the display itself. So there I've got it. The, my display here is just barely readable. And as I bring it up, so it doesn't affect that one because that has a different setting because it's a different screen. Okay? Does that right. give you some clues? We'll give it a try. Thanks. Okay. Okay. And that's what I call old eyes. As your eyes get older, they change, and you, you just have to adjust these things. Yes, Bill. Back on that Epson thing, you go to Epson's website, go to support, and then you select what item you're talking about. Yes. The there's a bunch of software there. Don't select the printer driver. Go down farther, and there's an actual Epson software updater okay. that you can download, and it will automatically search. But you have to have the specific uh, printer or whatever attached yeah. to your, uh, turned on to your computer. So it knows which one you're looking for. Okay. Okay. Right. When you make that adjustment, Bill, yeah. on your on the basic computer, yeah. you also can change the light level of the display. Correct. What's the difference between these two? Contrast and brightness and contrast. Well, well when, you, when you just made that adjustment there, were you changing the contrast or the brightness? I, was ch I did both. First, I changed the contrast. I turned off increased right. training. Right. Okay. And so then it becomes sort of duller. And then I was messing around with the brightness levels. And I probably ought to undo what I did because the display is not as clear and crisp as it was before. OK. All the way to the back. Um, when something happens, or we have a question like what we bring here, um, all of us at home react differently. And so I'm wondering if in the future, if there isn't um, partially a discussion that it could, we could all profit from knowing, uh, let's say, what is the panic factor? And it happens to me, even though, you know, I'm not a novice, but I'm, I'm, not, I'm not Bill. So somewhere in between. And so, but I tend to panic. Sure. And so my first result is to get on to help desk, and I'm sending Mark, I'm sending you, I'm going, oh my God, my world is ending, Safari won't open. Then I realize, once I calm down, that perhaps if, if we had some guidelines that would help us from anxiety attacks, <laughs> and, you know, to say, like, like you told him, at this point you need to go to a, you know. These are real world concerns. They are, and it could be something like something doesn't open, but all you need to do is reboot. So we need some guidelines let, to Let me just sort of explain the things that I do myself to keep me from making bad choices. Yes. Okay. The first thing that I do is, for each computer in the house, I've got a Ziploc freezer bag. I've done that. And in that Ziploc freezer bag, it's right. got a piece of paper that says what computer it is, what the serial number it is, and usually when I bought it, and usually the sales receipts are there. And any disks that came with the computer go in there. And anything that I attach to the computer, you get stuff, cables, extra, you know, they all go in there. And I don't keep them in a room with the computers. Okay, now. That's to prevent me from going like, oh, well, I'll just reinstall. Okay. Yes. The next thing that I do is I always remind myself what I learned from watching the British TV show, The IT Crowd, okay, which is, have you turned it off and turned it back on? Yes. Okay. In the old days, we used to call that a Polish restart. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> So that's the first thing I always do. Turn off the computer, turn it back on, and then see if the problem still exists. About half the time, actually about 80% of the time, problem goes away. Okay. 
Then the next thing I do is, if the problem still exists, then I say, okay, who do I know, not where can I look, but who do I know that might be able to point me in a good direction? And I send them an email. Which I do all the time. Yeah, and to help us, okay, you know, it's okay to send an email to the club help desk. Okay. It's not like Mark is going to suddenly stop driving the car that he's in and you know immediately start to answer that. It, it happens when we have spare time. Okay. Bill? But there are things we could we could do without panicking and things that we shouldn't do. And it would be kind of nice to know how far can we sort of, I mean, I started fooling around and all of a sudden everything I had went straight to the cloud. And I went, okay. oh my God. So okay. then I had to deal with that. Then I can't get on the fact to change the password. So then I'm panicking there. Okay. And it's like, stop, Lenore, stop. Yeah. When, when they send an email to the help desk, yeah. they get an automatic reply saying, yes. we've received your email, yeah. stand by. Maybe yeah. I ought to change that to take a deep breath and yeah. restart. Chuck, <laughs> 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 you want to weigh in here? Yeah, a little bit. Uh, a long time ago, when I was in Washington, we had a piece of paper from some place that had a lot of control, all P, all oh, sure. sure. commands that give us some guidance as to what you might try to do okay. and reset things differently. And I know I had that piece of paper, but I okay. couldn't find it last weekend when I needed it. We also, <laughs> had another, we also had another piece of paper that we used to hand out. We just we would have it at the membership desk for you to pick up if you wanted a copy, which was troubleshooting the first steps of troubleshooting. You know, and it'll just do this, do this, do this, do this. If that doesn't resolve the problem, then you need to, you know, stop trying to fix it yourself and seek professional guidance. Okay. So what I'm hearing from Lenore and I'm hearing from Chuck is maybe we ought to be printing those up again. Yes. Modern versions. Yeah. Okay. Or could they just be on the website? Um, we used to have them up on the website. <laughs> not, not, when you, not when you were running. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, if you're computers now, that's true. Yeah. Go to the library. Um, <laughs> no. I don't know um, that people said that we print all the Okay, but hold on a second. Well, let me hear from Jim, because Jim has vast experience in handling these sorts of situations. You don't want to know about this room. Okay. Uh -oh. I will get to you side, on the side, but why don't you attach those two pieces of paper to the email that he's going to send out about the post? Because I got to find them on my hard drive first. <laughs> <laughs> It'll probably be like afterwards. Okay. I understand that problem. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Bill. All right. But yes. Okay. We'll see so you later. Just, just to make sure it's clear in my head, a eight and a half by eleven piece of paper. Do you want three hole punch on this side? No. Okay. <laughs> Eight and a half by one piece of paper. It's just got all of the different key presses that you can do to do various things on the, what are called keyboard shortcuts for the Mac. And another one, which is just a, the, I think it's my seven steps of troubleshooting, I think I called it. Okay. And could it include the one where you hold the which key down? It's like a hard boot or a safe boot. I forget what you call it. Yeah. Oh, the control alt delete. Oh, sure. <laughs> She's talking about the <laughs> control alt delete. Yeah. Okay. But it's not yeah, only so control alt delete. Well, okay. I'm sorry. Now, it's different. Yeah. Not, it's not the boot. Okay. We, we good? Yeah. Okay. Just a minute. Sometimes I lose control of the What do I need? But both okay. hands up. That means I won't control back. Right? Okay. When you, well, I don't know if I want control. <laughs> Maybe I have Elton one of these. I can sit back and ask questions. You'd be in trouble. Or be like, <coughs> another resource. And, and, you know, all the years we've been running this organization, I just want everybody to know how deeply I appreciate the people who help me have this thing happen every month and who handle various things. Bill Howe and Chuck Stiver, uh, Mike. Uh, Mark. Mark Georges, who's sleeping again. Uh, <laughs> um, Tom Kirtner, uh, our treasurer, who I think has left.
for Las Vegas again? We always have a little extra money in the treasury when she comes back, so she must be doing something good. Okay, but anyway, but I appreciate it, because you're the people that make it happen. Bill. You go to Apple's website, you go to the support tab, and just do a search for keyboard shortcuts. Yeah. It'll bring you to a list that's a mile long of stuff to do. Okay. That's where I usually crib it, and then I reformat it so that it'll fit on one piece of paper. Yeah, it's, it's I think the more important part was the part where you say, you know, when something goes wrong, here are my steps to yeah. figure the problem out, stuff. not Continuous keyboard shortcuts. For okay. Do we have anybody else that had a, you had a question? Can I? Something that I don't understand, if, if you have one cable company serving your telephones and your TVs and so forth, okay. It's all coming in there. I, I've got a desktop. The emails come in on the desktop, yeah. fine. The emails come on iPad, fine. Yeah. The telephone's laying right beside it, but when that telephone comes on and brings a given number of emails up on the telephone, instead of being printed out, they're all in one straight, long, single line. Okay. What does that? Okay, when you say telephone, are you talking about an iPhone? iPhone, iPhone. I got an Android, but okay. it's done it on my, my wife's iPhone. Okay, coming up in a single line. And you can't see the preview, right, of the, of the email. You're just seeing a list of the... Okay, have you tried turning your iPhone? Yeah. And you should have a list on the side and the previews next to it. When I'm in the studio, you get your phone with you? Yeah. Okay, at the... After the break, talk to Chuck or to Bill and just have them see what, what you're talking about. Because, you know, sometimes the problem is we don't know how to describe what we see. This is like, how are you? It's H-O-W-A-R-E. <laughs> Next page. It goes oh, it's, it's coming in vertical. The vertical print, a single one letter. Okay. One letter. See Bill or Chuck with the one-on-one? -on -one? Okay. Where are we with time? Is he trying to hard restart? Ten minutes. Okay. Because that, that's the sort of thing, it's better to have, you know, rather than us do it with words, you've got people standing right next to you, you show them, they go, oh, okay, well, let's see if it's this or that. I mean, it's simple enough, you just throw the phone down, pick up the iPad, and read it. No. <laughs> no. See, no. You're operating in a different way than I do. Yeah. When somebody says it's not a big deal, yeah. I immediately go, it is a big deal. Yeah. Just like when somebody says it isn't the money, I know it's the money. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So, and the other principle that I follow is a very simple one. I'm too old to put up with this foolishness. Yeah. It's like it's supposed to work the way I want it to work, mm -hmm. when I want it to work. Yeah. And if it isn't doing it, then I know I either need a different device to do what I want to do, or we need to get that device bent to your will. You see, you're in control. Okay, God knows that we don't have control over much of our lives. Okay, with that said, anybody else would have helped us? Go on one school parts. Okay. Very simple. We've had a terrible time because we had to put a boat with a new router and modem in, and it's not working with our time machine. I don't want you to answer. I just want people to know Jim is going to talk to you later. Maybe they might be having similar problems. It might be like part of that conversation. Okay. Okay, we'll talk. <laughs> Can't see her. Okay, I'm going to say we're done, and it's time for us to do wrap okay. The presentation is on what's called cord cutting. Cord cutting in the stuff that we email out. There's going to be a couple other files in there, along with the PDF of the presentation and the PowerPoint of the presentation. These were four articles I thought were really good. Uh, first one is cord cutting 101: A Beginner's Guide, the Ultimate Cord Cutter's Guide. I mean, they cover stuff that I just don't want to cover because I don't know enough about it. But they cover in detail things. And then the three common mistakes new cord cutters make. 
And then there's another one that's in there, and it's Apple TV versus Roku, which streaming box should you buy? So they go into more detail about making that sort of decision between a, a Apple TV or a Roku. All right. So just so you know that we do send those supplemental materials, and there's a reason why we send them. So let me get the presentation started up here. Hello. Here we go. Okay, and then of course the normal thing, if you've got devices that are going to beep, boop, and do other things, turn them off. So, topic is what you need to know about getting your entertainment through internet streaming, also known as cord cutting. And so I put a little you know, funny picture up there. You're not really cutting cords. You're not in there with a pair of diagonal pliers cutting all the cords. You're not really doing that. It's just what they call it. Okay, so what is cord cutting? Some people call it cable cutting. It's real simple. It's customers canceling their cable TV streaming subscriptions and switching to internet TV streaming subscriptions, such as Amazon, Hulu, iTunes, Netflix, and YouTube. Okay, so a lot of people have cable coming into the house, and the cable company is doing their entertainment, the TV stuff, and it's also providing their internet, and it's also providing their phone service. Okay. So you're not telling Time Warner, Spectrum, you know, go to hell. What you're saying is, I don't want you to provide me the entertainment stuff anymore. Okay, so that's what we're talking about. So instead of them providing you the entertainment, you're using a different provider for that entertainment. And it's coming in over your internet connection. Okay. The other thing to keep in mind, and this sounds just like old stuff. You know, we're going back last century. Most cord cutters also use modern digital OTA, that stands for over the air, antennas to access local TV broadcasts. Okay, how many of you remember the rabbit ears? You know, you get them, yeah. Yeah, my sister wanted to watch a Mickey Mouse Club. My job was to hold one of the antennas. And I'd go, but I can't see the, shut up, Bill. Just hold the antenna. No, no, no. Okay. Now, part of the reason why I make a point of mentioning that is the younger folks, in some cases, they have no idea what you would use a TV antenna for. This is all brand new to them. Okay. So anyway, so even though we're not going to deal what antenna you would select, etc., I've got a website that you can use. So I'll give you information about that. So that's what cord cutting is. Now, the next question should be, why? Why would I, you know, take this wonderful long-term relationship I've had with the cable company, and why would I, you know, Ditch them and go with some, some new company. It has to do with money, 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 money. All right. Now, I have never had cable TV in my house. Never. Okay. Never. Okay. So I was shocked to find out. I had to look this number up. But the average 2016 cable TV bill in the United States was 150 bucks a month. That's okay. Yeah. Or 1800 per year. Okay. So I mentioned this to my wife, and she went, Oh, that's nothing. So and so, of course, they got the four TVs, and each TV has a little box, and that's 15 a month extra, mm -hmm. blah, blah, blah. They're, you know, it's like $2,500 a year they're paying for this stuff. Mm -hmm. I was like, Whoa. Now that's just for the entertainment portion. That's not the internet portion where they usually hit you up for about $35, $40 a month. And that's not the phone. Right, that's, this is just entertainment. Okay, so if you were a viewer, because I don't like the word, that the phrase cord cutter. If you're a consumer, you're a viewer, and you've got just three 
internet subscriptions. And most people don't need three. Okay. So that would be Netflix, Hulu, and Amazon Prime. And Amazon Prime is a really good deal because they also get the free shipping on stuff. You've got access to the Kindle books. There's all sorts of stuff you get with Amazon Prime. You'd be paying about 30 bucks a month or $360 a year. Okay. $1,800 versus $360. Wow, I can buy a lot of beer with that. I can take my wife out for dinner instead of lunch because, you know, they charge you more at dinner rather than lunch. Okay. I can do some good stuff with that. Okay, so it's primarily a financial one, financial reason. Okay, so let's say you, you're ready to kick the cable company to the curb. What do you have to have to do this? Okay. Well, first thing is, you need some sort of television, modern television with HDMI ports. It just makes it a lot easier to do it if it's got HDMI ports. Uh, and we'll talk a little bit about if you've got the older, older style TV, there's still, you can still do some cord cutting. You also need some sort of streaming subscription service. Now that's if you want the high quality content. You know, you want to see the, the new movies, you want to be able to binge watch television series and that. So you need some sort of subscription service. You need a streaming device. Think of it as the replacement for the cable box. You know, right now your TV is hooked to a cable box. Well, you've got to have some sort of device that talks to the internet that lets the TV talk to the internet. And then I recommend an antenna for over-the-air broadcasts. Because, you know, you want to cover, you want local news. Well, maybe you don't want local news. <laughs> uh, local what? Eh, maybe you don't want local weather. Local sports. You want to be able to see local sports. Uh, you know, the local PBS stations. You can't beat a, a over-the-air antenna. Okay. And then last but not least, you got to have an internet connection. And it's best if that internet connection is at least 3 megabits per second down. Okay. The average connection that most people have nowadays is 5 megabits with about a third having 15 megabits, and then there's the people that are just, just gorge themselves on data, and they're, they're doing the high-speed fiber, you know, 60 megabits now. But you can get around with three megabits now. Watching one of these digital channels, and if your wife wants to watch one thing, and you want to watch something else, you may need to have it more than the 15 megabit one. So, streaming subscription services. There's a bunch of them out there. I'm just going to talk about the three that I actually know something about. Netflix, Hulu, Amazon Prime. All right, so once upon a time, there was a company called Blockbuster. And they had a guy that was just below vice president level. And he said, you know, this internet stuff, we can make money doing internet stuff. And we could be making money if instead of people coming to our stores, if we had them where they subscribe, and we send them a disc every month, and when they return it, we send them another one, and then we have like a website where they can say which disc they want next. I mean, we could really, and we could lower the number of stores, improve profitability, you know, really do some wonderful things. And the folks at Blackbuster said, no, no. And this guy really was, was sold on this idea. So he said, well, you know, I talked to uh, some banks, and I showed them my business plan, and they're going to fund me. So I'm going to leave Blockbuster. And he formed a company called Netflix. So it started out, you'd go on the website, it would be at 8 bucks a month. You'd go on the website, you say, hey, I want this DVD. They mail it to you, you watch it, you mail it back. Then they send you the next one you got on your list, and back and forth. And then they started providing some of the stuff via the internet. And they discovered, hey, guess what? A lot more people were watching this stuff on the internet, and you don't have the postage back and forth. Wow, this is even a cheaper way to provide stuff. More money in their pockets, a better value for the customers. So that's the origins of Netflix. 
So then you have another company, it's called Hulu. And again, Hulu's going to be between 8 and 12 bucks a month, depending on what you're doing. Hulu was formed by these other companies that were feeling threatened by all this internet stuff. And they were very small companies, ABC, NBC, I don't think CBS is in the consortium, I think Fox is. But there's a couple of these large networks, uh, CW, uh, the Warner Brothers thing, and, and they, they go, hey, you know, we got to get into this. But nobody wanted to commit themselves full time, they'd rather create a consortium. So you've got another one that's called Hulu that'll let you uh, uh, see all sorts of stuff. And then last but not least, we've got the folks at Amazon. This is the online store where they were already selling you movies you know, on disk. And you could rent them, like the Apple iTunes, you know, over the internet. Or you could buy them over the internet and keep them yourself. Well, then they said, well, you know, how about instead of us, you know, with the renting, we make it available so that they can do other stuff too. And we'll just sort of make a bundle package deal. And you, and you get you know, free shipping on stuff and all sorts of other, you know. Big, big. So this was sort of like a, a minor thing with them. And then they started to see the cash roll in it. And they're going like, oh, you know, those media producers are awful greedy. They, they want such and such amount of money for us to be able to run the old Perry Mason TV shows. What if we take some of that cash that's rolling in <coughs> and we start doing our own productions? So Amazon was the first. And then that was followed by Netflix, and Yahoo also is doing their own production. So where the money goes, things flower. Okay. So it doesn't matter which one of these you have. The idea is you have to have some sort of subscription service. So next, streaming devices. Okay, now this is to allow your television to connect to the internet. Well, we have some devices that are already out there where you don't need another screen, another thing. They're called smart devices. So you have smart TVs, smart DVD players, smart Blu-ray players, where you can connect them to the internet either with a cable or through Wi-Fi. And you got the remote, and they've got their little applications that let you look at all sorts of content, not just the DVD or the Blu-ray. Okay. Now, me, I don't like having the devices where they're smart and the thing is built into it. Because, think about it, you buy a TV, average price is going to be in 2016, Average price somebody pays for a TV is eight hundred dollars. Okay, and most people, you know, lower or bigger. But I'm just saying the average. Okay, not the mean, not the median, the average. But how long do you keep a TV? Typically, I keep them ten years. Well, the smart stuff that's in it isn't always upgradable. So you end up with a 10-year-old interface in a TV. To me, it makes more sense, instead of buying a smart TV, to buy what's called a set-top box. They're also called streaming sticks. But basically, that connects to the television. And it's a separate unit. And that's what connects you to the internet. Well, five years, two years from now, I'll get another one. These things typically are running in the you know, anywhere from $29 up to $120-something dollars. Yeah? Uh, are most of those SDMI inputs? HDMI. That's what I said. Yeah, HDMI inputs. Oh. Correct. Yeah. Okay. You're correct. <laughs> but there's one, Roku, they make a low-end model that's still got the RCA plugs on the back, so you can connect it to the composite in and out of an old-style cathode-ray television. <laughs> or a television that doesn't have HDMI. So Roku, they're a company I have a lot of admiration for. They actually look at what their customers have and what their customers need, and then they figure out the device to meet the need. Yeah, Elton. Well, 
uh, you talk about using these to, in lieu of your regular cable TV subscriptions for, for TV channels, do those guys, Roku and, and Hulu and Amazon Prime, do they cover all the, the, the channels that you would want, all the ESPNs, the golf channels, the sports, all the major networks, or you no. get that with your antennas. Okay. Uh, are you going to lose something by that? The way it works is this. Now, I'm going to use the example of HBO. Okay, home box, box office. HBO. All right, right now, you pay big bucks to the cable company. What would they say to you if you said, hey, you know, I don't want this other stuff, I just want HBO? <laughs> you say, sorry, Charlie. Yes. Yeah, okay. <laughs> now, with a streaming box, I can cut a deal with HBO, pay them, you know, whatever they want a month, but not get all the other stuff that I don't look at. And who gets cut out of the deal? The cable company. HBO's still getting their cut of the pie, but you're paying less. Okay, so you're still getting what you want, but you're dealing more directly with HBO as opposed to through the cable company. Okay. With this setup, how are you getting your signal to the device? Okay, the device, you're talking about the streaming device or the streaming stick. It's coming in from the internet, either through Wi-Fi or through a cable. And then the device is plugged into the TV with an HDMI cable. You say it's coming through a cable, I understand, but when you say Wi-Fi, what do you mean? Um, 802.11 A, B, G, N, the same way that your laptop connects to the internet. It radio waves. Radio waves. Well, what about... Wireless access is the other thing they call it. Yeah, but what about broadband through your phone? Like okay. Verizon. Um, if you are not using a, if you're using cell phone technology to bring the signal into your house, your internet, this may not be the deal for you because it uses unbelievable amounts of data. Video is very, very... So it's if you have a standard internet connection at your house, not if you're doing Wi-Fi, any of the cellular things. Well, I'm not sure what you mean by standard internet connection because you've got either the cable company or the phone company, whatever they call their thing that rides the phone line. Okay. If it's the phone company, typically they're calling it DSL, it means that your internet signals come in over plain old telephone wires. Okay? If you've got a contract with a cable company, your internet signals coming in typically through a coax cable that comes to your house. That's what I'm talking about. Either DSL or coax, you've got to have that sort of an internet connection going on. Or five. Okay? So your cutting is or just five. cutting your payment to the cable company. You're only for the entertainment portion. Okay? Only for the entertainment portion. What about you still have to have internet, you still have to have your phone service. AT&T. Right. Yeah. Viewers. Yeah. I have a modem. Yeah. All right. My computer is uh, is is not hardwired. It's talking to the modem. Yeah. It's using radio waves to talk to the Right. Now, when you take a get rid of your entertainment package, would, would they normally change the modem or you keep the same modem? Or? Typically the modem stays in place. They don't change anything. Because that modem, uh, in many cases, also is providing you your phone service. In AT&T's case, if you've got a landline, it's going to that modem. Okay, so that modem's going to stay in place. So you're still paying them for the phone, you're still paying them for the internet connection, you're just not paying them for the movies and the TV shows. Okay. Okay. And if you have an Amazon account, Prime? Yeah. Okay. You already have access to a streaming service. It's beautiful. Can you get your, your regular, uh, or the like, is this, what? Okay. But let, let, me, let me go on a little bit. But, 
when I get to the point where I walk through how you would go about doing this, the actual steps, then sort of just raise your hand to remind me. Okay? All right, let me just finish the other one down here. The other thing you can do is, so you could have a set-top box and streaming sticks, but the other thing is, you've already got a computer, either a desktop or a laptop that's connected to the internet. Okay? And most of these subscription services, let's say you've already got Amazon Prime, okay? And you've got a computer. If you log into the Amazon site and you click on Amazon Prime, and then you click on videos, you're going to see, oh, there's all these movies, and I can be watching them on my iMac. Now, you can't get them onto the big screen TV, because you don't have a set-top box, but you have your computer. Oh, oh you're showing that. Yeah. yeah, you can do that. I mean, okay. interface you have to put, put your cable from your, your yeah. iMac oh, or your Mac, Mac Mini to the TV. I have okay. an HDMI cable that yeah. can hook up to this and hook okay. up to my TV. Yeah. I, you know, see, I've got so many computers in my house <laughs> that I've sort of, the law got laid down. We don't need another computer sitting near the TVs. So I don't even think about that. Yeah, you could have a Mac Mini plugged into your large screen TV and be presenting this stuff, or your laptop doing a dongle into the big screen TV. Yeah, great. We watch very, very little line. Uh, I know we got over the air and then we've got this. Uh, and the the uh, Hulu and, and, and uh, uh, Netflix. You select what you want to watch whenever you want to watch it. But the things that we record and watch later, that, could, that would come over the air, but how do you connect all that with the you know, this is a topic I don't want to touch. <laughs> and the reason why is I don't know enough about PBRs to speak with any sort of authority on it. I will say this. I called somebody last night and I said, hey, I don't, I don't know enough about this. And he said, oh, well, there's a lot of things you need to touch and it's more than a normal 45 minutes. But he mentioned the name Silicon Dust. It's a company that makes devices for doing recording of, of entertainment when it's streaming in through the internet. And he started talking about all the different cards and there's plugins, you know, you just plug a stick in and, and I went, whoa, wait a minute, you know, too big of a topic. Okay. If you are someone who religiously records stuff for view later, you may want to stay with your cable company because you've got all no, the content already on the box. You can buy a TiVo and stay with it. Yeah. 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 I just don't want to go to the desktop. Okay. But in order to buy a DVR now, yeah. unless you're buying it from somebody on the internet, you, know, you have to subscribe. No. You, oh, yeah. You buy it from like Best Buy or anybody like that? Even online, you have to subscribe to get it. To their service they or sell, to? They won't, yeah, their service, they will not sell you sure. a DVR. Oh. No, not anymore. Okay, no. I tried to do that. I had a DVR back when they were analog a few years ago, yeah. and then they converted to all yeah. digital. Yeah. My $500 uh, DVR was no good. Okay, I'll go to Jim. Yes, Jim, yes, what do you want to throw in? EYV or TV. Okay. 120 bucks. Plugs into your Macintosh. Yeah. Records anything that comes in the end. So no one is able to record it all. Okay. Is that the Delgado? Yes. Okay. 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 Yes. Okay. yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. It used yes. to be Elgato, but they just sold it to someone who knows I lost control of the meeting. I'm about to assume responsibility and control back in my Alright, so let me continue with the presentation. It looks like we have a topic that sparked a lot of discussion. Maybe I can find somebody who actually knows more about doing the recording part. Alright, so next part of it was just to briefly touch about over there antennas. If you're using an antenna, you know, rabbit ears, Miami Valley, you can pick up about 32 channels. No, 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 no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You've got 80-some channels. 
Um, I can pick up eighty. Depends on where you're at. Well, not in Utah. Yeah. Okay. No, not in Utah. Yeah. 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 Okay. I also have a professional antenna guy. Okay. Okay. So he's using a wireless antenna, and you got or channel master, and you got it where you can turn it. Yeah. Okay. I used to have one of those until Hurricane I took mine out. <laughs> so now I've got the thing to stick on the window. Yeah. Okay. I get twenty-two dollars. Okay. But the thing is, the important thing I want to communicate is. Okay, there's a lot of stuff that's being broadcast that you might actually want to watch, NCIS, whatever. There's also a lot you don't want to watch. But there's a website, antennarecommendations.com. You put in your street address, they'll tell you what signals are available in your area and which of the different color-coded antennas you need to reach it. And this is where I say, you know, mileage may vary. Okay, a lot depends on your local, where you are environmentally. Are you slightly up, slightly down? Do you have water towers? But it's a good website just to get information about which way to point your antennas. You know, I kept pointing mine south because I kept thinking, you know, that that's what, no, the stuff I'm picking up is all north. So turn it around and put it outside the house. Got a little bit better reception. So that's antennarecommendations.com. Okay, moving ahead. So, what sort of process should you follow to implement this stuff? Well, what I recommend is go slow, okay? Don't rush into anything. So, first step would be inventory what you watch. Sit down. Like, like you're in a, uh, in, uh, Nelson, you know, where you, you, the audits you, for radio, television, you write down what you watch when you watch it. Do that for two weeks and figure out what you actually enjoy, what you actually watch. Not what you record. You know, we have these things that if I stopped recording, I had all this stuff recording, but I never watched it. Okay. So it's like, what do you really watch? What are the shows that matter to you? Then, after you've done that, talk to your significant other. What do they watch? What's really important to them? Okay. Then, once you've got that list, then you can look and see, oh, is it available over the air, regular broadcast? Okay. Is it something that's available from an HBO only, or it's, you know, it's exclusive to someone? Is it something that's uh, from a particular media producer, you know, uh, the uh, CW or Fox or whatever. Okay. Is it a sports thing that, like, you know, you're really into baseball, you're not into football? Okay. And you write that down. And then you look to see what streaming applications they have. So let's say you're interested in baseball. Okay. You find out what the major leagues, do they have an app it's for a streaming device, for your iOS device, for your iPhone, for whatever you're using. That'll let you watch the games through the internet. Then you go, okay, I don't want to be watching it just on my iPad or my iPhone. I want to watch it on a big screen TV. And I want to have it just real simple where I just turn on a thing and the TV's able to do it. Does that streaming device have their app? So again, it's what do you want, who provides it, how is it provided? Okay, now the next thing is, once you get your list of what you're looking for, try a couple of these guys. They all have free trial periods. Because okay, you're looking, not just do they have the content, but can you find it when you're logged into them? So you're tasting the food before you buy the restaurant, if you will. And then next, let's say you're, you're more concerned about traditional networks, ABC, BBC, CBS, uh, Canadian Broadcasting Corp, you know, those guys. Look and see what apps they have. Okay. And are they free? Do they have free content? Or do they have 
just paid content, or do they have a mixture of it, where they got some freebies and they also have some paid content? How much does all that cost? So you're, you're sort of like, uh, it's like ordering a meal in a five-star restaurant. You're doing it all a la carte. You're not just saying, hey, send me the morning platter. You're saying, yeah, we'll start out with you know, the soup. OK, that's $25. Now we'll have, oh, we'll have two entrees. OK, they're 120 each. Uh, which wine are we going to have with it? OK. So you're picking the meal that's going to provide you with the most satisfaction. All right. Then, once you've got all that information, and then you figure out, what do I want to buy? Do I want to just watch it on my, my laptop? Do I want to just watch it on my iMac? Do I want to just watch it on my iPad? You know, for a nine inch screen, that, that, those iPads are really high resolution. Yeah, you should play in bed watching TV on mm -hmm. the iPad. It can be sort of nice. Okay. So you don't necessarily have to go to a large screen TV. But if you do want to do a big screen TV, then you're going to be better off getting a streaming device for the TV. Keep in mind that you could have multiple TVs so that I can watch the Star Wars movie here, my wife can watch Dancing with the Stars there. Okay. All right. So, now, questions before I do demo? Okay, we'll go all the way back to Lenore. Is it true, though, that we're starting to have great big, huge um, uh, grabs and that inter internet stock is going to be great because even the football is the latest thing I've heard that they're going to stream it because the networks don't have to pay the providers anymore. So, I mean, don't we have a huge, big national struggle going on between okay. all these people where the networks are trying to get out? That struggle was always there. Okay. It's just that you weren't part of the struggle. Okay. The cable com company was deciding what they were going to provide to you and at what cost. And then, you know, okay, you know, no local TV stations because they didn't want to pay the money to the local TV stations. So that struggle's already been there. Now it's just you're able to pick and choose what you want, what you don't want. So you're in the French restaurant. You want French pot roast, okay? You don't want, let's see, I'm trying to think, what's another uh, expensive French pot roast? Filet mignon. Filet mignon. Filet mignon. And on fire. We'll say, and on fire. Okay. Well, you say, okay, I want, I want my meal, and then they bring you it all. And you go, I don't want a burning steak. I just want, you know, my quiche. The cable companies are going out though, right? I mean, eventually, we're not going to need that at all. All we're going to need is a great internet connection. You, I, I think that's a valid approach. A valid approach. But nobody's Where's selling anything to get to well, so it's, it's very much like what we saw happen to the uh, large bookstores, the large record stores. Yeah. You know. Thank you. Okay. And, and it's a, a similar to what we're seeing happening with the large on online retailers where the older Sears Roebuck, that was a cutting edge company back in the day. You know, mail order. I mean, they were able to provide you stuff mm -hmm. out in the middle of nowhere. And buy a house. Yeah, yeah. house, house. tools, cars. Okay, anyway, it's a new day. Okay, so, let me see. We had other people, questions? Let me go. I, I'm probably a, a, the perfect kind of a person that a salesman wants. Mm -hmm. Because it, some, for some reason I get disillusioned because I, I can buy the Apple computer and I have that with all my music on it and mm -hmm. 10,000 photographs. So then I go down and I get a 65 inch curve screen for mm -hmm. a couple grand. And I got that and that's the smart TV. And then you take your little laser pointer and you get off of your, your AT&T and mm -hmm. you go over to your uh, uh, 
whatever your Netflix, uh -huh. and voila, we got Netflix, we got all this stuff on that page, uh -huh. and then the wife says, now let's watch a movie, and you click on Netflix, and it says uh, pay eight bucks. Yeah. Now I'm paying, you know, a hundred and a half for yeah. TV service, and I got all this other stuff, yeah. and now I've got the privilege of paying eight bucks yeah. to watch this. Watch your movie. The thing is, okay, do you want to buy the movie itself or do you want to have a subscription with Netflix where you can belly up to the bar and eat as much as you want and watch as much as you want and it's only eight bucks every month? No, you're welcome. Well, ten bucks a month. Ten bucks a month. But you, you have unlimited, you have, you're telling me if, if you sign up for the the, the privilege you, you can get every movie. Every Not every movie. movie. It's what they have. So well, on Netflix, I understand that. Netflix. I want to say they have maybe uh, somewhere around ten thousand movies. Okay. If I'm an invalid, I can sit R after R and watch movie after movie for eight bucks a month. Yeah. Yeah. You can. Yeah. It's called binge watching. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Right, right. We yeah. have. I go. I. My, my wife has a day off. That was a gimme. I'm leaving the house. She's watching. What was that? Uh, Hill Street Blues. Okay. okay. She started with episode one, season one. I come back six hours later. She's still watching Hill Street Blues. She's done with season one. She's starting in on season two. Yeah. And I go. <laughs> Are you having a good time? And she says, yes, I'm doing nothing but watching Hill Street Blues. That's what I want to do. I'm having a great time. And I go, good. Leave me alone. And she says, did you bring in dinner? Yeah. That's fine. That's fine. That's fine. Um, the thing is, some people enjoy watching a television series, boom, 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 and then they see the whole thing in one second. Right. Or maybe in two cities. And that's one of the differences between these internet subscription services. You watch it when you want it, yep. not when they have it on the air. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, what I'd like to do, if I'm going to take, mm -hmm. I'll, I'll, I'll go to Lena. Um, I hope I can make it quick. Sure. I have, I've, I've done your process a little bit haphazardly. I find I have. Two smart TVs and a smart DVD Blu-ray player. Mm -hmm. Not as big as yours, but there's reasonably priced. Yeah. I subscribed to Amazon Prime yeah. last a couple of weeks ago, and I wanted to watch a movie last week. Everything fine, but about halfway through it stopped. And when I went back to see what was going on, it said something about bandwidth, not yeah. about yeah. That would be your internet connection doesn't allow enough stuff to come in. Uh, or your router isn't. Yeah, it's the router itself. Your wireless router it doesn't have the capacity. We, we noticed that. That was the AT&T. Did I call them? Um, it's more likely that you're on a smaller bandwidth, a smaller amount of data coming in at a time. So. What, 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 I'll, I'll, speedtest.net. Okay. Also called UCLA, O-O-K-L-A. Speedtest.net. You go there, you hit the test button, they'll tell you what your download speed and your upload speed is. And it should you know, be. You want to be in at 5 megabit, at least 5 megabit. At least 5? Yeah. If she's on AT&T, she's probably got DSL. Doesn't matter. I want to see. Where am I? Okay, I'm at 1153. I've got seven minutes. What I want to do is just show you what a set top box interface looks like. Okay? So let me switch that over just real quick here. I've got three remotes up here, so if you want to know why I'm confused, it's because I'm handling three remotes. Okay, so I've got a set-top box connected to the projector. So think of the projector as being the TV screen. And this is from a company called Roku. 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 So 
you want to come up after the presentation, I got a box that it came in. So I'm going to just tap my little OK button here. All right, so over here I've got the things where I can connect this Roku to the Wi-Fi, Internet, however I'm doing it, and various other selections. These are what they call apps. And each one is from a different media provider. So let me go up to the top here. Here we go. So I'm just going to go up to the top. Netflix. You want to see what Netflix looks like? Netflix. OK, first thing it wants to know is who's watching it? Which one of the five people on the account is watching? So I'm going to say it's me, William. Now, new releases. Da, 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 da. So that's the stuff that came in this week. Okay. And then down below, there's another one. What's trending now? In other words, what seems to be most popular people are watching? And there's just tons of that stuff there. And then I can go down and I've got a suggestion. Because I watched a movie called The Killer, these are other movies that are sort of in that genre that are like it or maybe have the same actors I might want to see. And there's tons of those. Then I've got, oh, let me go back here for a second. Things that I'm in the process of watching. So I was watching the movie V for Vendetta. I got partway through. My wife had bridge people last night, so I had to, you know, help clean up. So I was like, okay, not a problem. I just pause it, do my thing. So later on today, I can go back and I can pick up the Vendetta for Vendetta, watch it from the beginning or where I left off. I'm watching a series called Iron Fist, which was produced just for Netflix. It's okay. Um, series on unfortunate events that was for one of my granddaughter, my granddaughter, you know, a bunch of different shows. So I've got probably eh, 15, 20 things that I'm working on. Foreign movies, TV mysteries, top picks for, it keeps track of what I've watched and then they give me other suggestions. TV shows featuring, I mean, tons of stuff, tons of stuff. You got you know more than ten thousand TV shows and movies available for Netflix. And documentaries. Documentaries. And that's about ten dollars a month. Yeah. 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 Okay. Now, ten dollars a month. I'm on that account. My son in Washington is on that account, and my son in California is on the account, and my wife's on the account. Can have up to five people. So it's not $10 from each of us. The kid in Washington's paying the bill. I'm just sitting along for the long run. So it's 10 bucks a month that he's paying. Yeah. Okay, but our son and daughter are getting back together. They had that Netflix, but they wanted to do that, and they did it, except that our son dropped out because of that part of it. But they wanted to do that, and they did it, except that our son brought that part of it. Because unless you want to only have one person at a time watching something, it's an extra fifteen dollars a month. Um, it's been changed. You can have two people watching it at the same time, but in different accounts. Um, it's on the internet. They don't know. They don't care. Yes, they do. Well, I know that my wife and I have been watching Netflix at the same time, different shows, different devices. And when the son in Washington wants to watch, he gets, no, you're only allowed to have two people. If he's watching something and I'm watching something here, no problem. Okay. Let me bounce out of this here. Those apps, are they just come with it, Bill? Some of the apps come with it. What you're seeing is pretty much the apps that come with it, and that's uh, about... Okay, we got about 100 that are there. There's more than 1,600 apps that you can put on a Roku. You've got more than 1,600 apps that you can put on an Apple TV. What I'm going to do is, I'm going to say there's a lot more to show 
Do I have your permission to pick this up next week? Same place where I can walk you through what an Apple TV has, what a Roku has. Okay, not next week. We're going to do it next week. Next month. And that way, I can appropriately answer your question.